over the course of my hockey career, I suffered a couple shoulder injuries, um, a couple hip injuries, but it was most notably this injury that now I have a lot of SI joint pain from it. Left SI joint? Left SI. How about the right? Mm -mm. So I was squatting my freshman year. It was Christmas break. I was loading my back pretty heavy, 315. Heard a little click. SI that, joint or low back? That was low back. Center. L5S1. In my MRI, I had a herniated disc, sure. L5S1. Okay. But I was fine. I didn't have any pain and I was excelling in my sport and I was very healthy. And then in 2018, I just started feeling like a little kink. This was my second year of pro hockey going into my third year. And usually, you know, I just do maintenance and things start to get better, but it started to get worse. Okay. What did I do? I kind of continued to play on it. And then now it feels more SI area, but it's both back and SI on this left side. Well, it's all connected. That's mm -hmm. the number one reason you're here. Pain is a symptom, but overall wellness, it's a combination of multiple things. Okay. So definitely the SI area. I have pain in my neck also. So it's the pain most of all is the main reason I'm here. Pain in the SI joint, pain in the back, mm -hmm. pain in the neck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go to the neck right now. Is it radiating anywhere? Is it local? I'll get tingling a little bit down this arm. I think it's only when I lay a certain way. Mm -hmm. Another when did thing, the neck start? Very recent, within the past couple months, I think posturally, my posture started to fade a little bit and then I started pushing my neck forward. Okay. I never used to do that. That's a newer thing, you know. I'm not the expert, but I think because of one, they both are okay. very much correlated. Both. So left SI joint, mm -hmm. right neck, right side of the yeah. neck, and it goes down, but it goes into your and left And I'd like to arm. mention one thing. I'm a lefty hockey player. Okay. So for 20 years, I'm shooting, I'm targeting this left side where I'm twisting in a very specific way okay. for a long period of time. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So left SI joint, right neck pain, but it's shooting down the left arm, you said. Yeah. I'll it doesn't more shoot down the right? Mildly. I'd say mildly. That's very new too. Like that, that just started creeping up very recently, but mostly on the left side, it's very faint on the left side. It's mostly this left SI. I'm having dysfunction when I walk, okay. and that's pretty new too. Right. Okay, so yeah. left hip, neck, down the right side with shooting down the left arm. Mm -hmm. Scale of one to 10, 10 being the worst. Definitely a 10 at the moment. It's limited a lot of things I was able to do. Like I was a professional hockey player for three years after Adrian, and going into my third year, like I said, it was, my energy's always been very high, very passionate person, energetic, and it's really slowed me down because physically I can't move that much. And also it is tough on the spirits with the consistency of the pain. I've tried anti-inflammatories, I've tried pain medication for a short period of time, but it masked symptoms and I'm trying to get to the root of this. That's why I'm here to reverse engineer this thing with you. Okay. So, so now I'm a reverse engineer of the spine. Yeah. Cool. That's what I like, <laughs> cool. That's what I like to think of things. You were, you're working backwards, right? What's the root of these things? Because I've dealt with the symptoms, but... Okay. You've yeah. seen other people for this? You've had x-rays done? You've x-rays, MRI. Before coming here? And you're coming kind of far. From the D, yeah. 313, yeah, from Michigan. 313, three, three. <laughs> you're here for how long? One week. Okay, so we have some time to figure this out. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good. So what I'm gonna have you do, I'm gonna watch you walk first, mm -hmm. and evaluate the gait, mm -hmm. and from the exam, we're gonna go to the x-rays. Okay. And then let's see what we can match up and where we need to start. Cool. Um, depending on how much stuff there is or whatever is there, will determine over these few visits kind of what what's really causing all this yeah 
Sounds good. And then if there's any follow-up needed down the road, it's going to be a choice of either coming back or we need to find somebody there. If you're near Mount Hora, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. you've got fantastic guys there. you got one of the wizards in Madison, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. He's one of our wizards. He's hiding out in Madison. I'm going to call you up, Doc, today. Uh, yeah, Dr. Bill Dressler, one of the one of the best chiropractors in the world. Mm -hmm. And he's in Madison, Wisconsin. Called you up, Doc. Seriously. He's the one who taught me uh, the doctor patient class at the concert seminar. 20 years ago. Oh, wow. 20 years ago. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay. Shall we get started? Let's go. Let's do it. So what are some things we see? We see the right side is a little bit higher, more pronounced. He's saying he's lefty though. That's what's interesting. Your right side is higher and more pronounced. So I feel, when I walk, I feel my body wanting to lean back to, to the side that there's pain, interestingly okay. enough. So, you so like, my body feels like a want to go there. You want to go into the pain. Yeah. Interesting. These are the dimples we're looking at. And when we're looking at the dimples, they should be moving up and down. They shouldn't be going like mm. this, okay? So we want to see what's going on here. And then as you start to follow his spine up, you can see we don't really have a smooth curve going in here. Then once we get to around the mid back, we actually have what's called dishing in the spine. It's flat in the mid back. That usually dishing starts at around T6, T7, even down at T8. Um, from there, yes, he's leaning into the side. The question is, is he leaning into the side of pain because of the hip, or is he leaning into the side of pain because of something else going on up top? Mm -hmm. Keep walking, please. And another thing to mention, I have had hip surgeries too. What kind of hip surgery? Labrum. Yeah, both of them? Both labrums. You tore them? Yes. Okay. How far apart were the tears? So from the first, the, the, when, the when tear, was the first one? The, the surgeries were much different than the actual date of injuries. Have a seat, please. Starting at the base of the neck. Ten, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen. There it is. Fifteen points around C one, C two left side. Got something hiding here. Nice. Almost missed it. You got a tiny little bit hiding right around T3 on the right side. Mm. Interesting. I get pain in my scapula on that side. Yeah. So why are you here? I want answers, doctor. Are you ready for the answers is the question. Oh my gosh. I am so ready for the answers because I'm just, I'm going to execute. All right. Whatever's next, we're going to execute it. All right. We're getting pressure around T11, T12. Five pointer. Now, as we're running down L4, eight, nine points. Interesting. So for you, your sacrum is clear. I'm getting around L4, around T12, around T3, and C1. Mm. Okay, one, two, three, four. Next thing I need to do is let's go ahead and evaluate your pelvis. I'm on the SI joints, feet together, open and close the knees, sir. Feet together? Yep, mm -hmm. open and close. Open. Make sure your feet are touching. Open the knees, close the knees, good. Right side only. Do the right side only. So when he does the right, there is a movement of the left SI joint under my finger. Do the left SI, open and close the left. 
Yeah, but when he does the right, it's also there too. It's actually fixated on both sides, sir. Scoot back for me, please. Now let's go a little deeper and check out the sacrum, okay? Mm -hmm. And L4. Now here's what's interesting. There are a couple of things that could be causing this, okay? Mm -hmm. We know there's an SI joint issue, right, in terms of pain. Correct. Right now, from the motion, there is fixation on both sides. There is a little more fixation on the left side. Now, we're getting pressure also at L4. Let me show you. That's sacrum S1. That's L5. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right there. Mm -hmm. That's L4. Oh. Okay? Yeah. That's... That hurts. That's swollen. Mm -hmm. Now, L4, you have these iliolumbar ligaments, right? These are ligaments that come off the vertebrae. That could also be pulling on that hip, possibly, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know yet. We're going to just keep going. We definitely have an L4. Oh, boy. Yes? Yes. Yeah, Head down, hurt. please. Static palp. And right around T2, T3, we get swelling right there. Mm -hmm. More tender here or here? This one, that one. The first one. Mm -hmm. Head down, please. Seven, one, two, that's three, yeah. that's four. Ooh. Three or four? Three. Three or two? Three. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Head down, sir. Round your back a little bit. The other way. Good. Oh, yeah, that. Mm -hmm. That's nine. That's ten. Ten, but nine still hurts. Sharp as well. I'm getting oh. ten is where it's starting. Mm -hmm. T3, T10, L4. You with me so far? Yeah, I'm trying. All right. Mm-hmm. Scoot forward again, please. Let's recheck motion of the pelvis. Feet together, open and close the knees. Open and close. Left side only. Yeah, the right's moving with it. Right side only. Interesting, watch this. I'm gonna hold L4. Right side only. So when I hold L4 up and he moves the right, the left is fine. You get what so I is that doing? weakness in the lower back? That means I'm not actually starting on your pelvis. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that, that's that's what that means. That means I'm not starting. On, that means what I'm trying to show you, if I push L4 forward, mm -hmm. it frees up your left hip. Interesting. Crazy. I have so many questions, but I don't want to ask them. But, uh, oh, boy, did yeah, that hurt. All right. L4, T10, T3. I need to check your upper cervical now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. I believe five, there's pain there definitely. It's tender right there. But I think five, there was pain also. I was trying to feel it out. Oh my gosh. That's just so. Sure that one. It was just very tight. So we have oh. C1. Uh -huh. We have T3. These are findings I see on you. We haven't determined what we're going to adjust yet. Okay. But we found C1 on the left, T3, T10, L4. Let's go to the film right now and see what's going on. Okay. I've watched many of your videos. I've been watching probably for the past year or so. Mm -hmm. okay, I yeah, I've been very curious. I've been to multiple different chiropractors who are very good in Michigan, but I like how you're so thorough with going through, like we spoke about before, the journey, because it's so important to talk about. So what happens when you go to get adjusted? I don't get it. You've had x-rays done? I've had x-rays done. I, well, I was found. What were you told? That's what I'm a little confused about. What were I you was told? I was told three weeks ago by a chiropractor that I was a sneeze away from back surgery. So for what? Back surgery for what? For my herniated discs. Where? 
L5S1. Okay. So I was, over the course of the past year, I got very discouraged because I was, in a sense, being told dangerous things, I thought. Um, it was my first, I got recommended to go to, to a place that had good reviews and I got recommended by a friend, but when I went there, I didn't feel, um, it felt transactional where I wanted to get answers and more information and it was a very quick in and out and I didn't feel comfortable because of that. I wasn't asked very many questions. Okay. So that was a big turn off, of course. But I've gone to multiple different places and I, I get different opinions. So okay, it, it gets to the point to- It gets frustrating. Very frustrating. So the, the, then it becomes like, where do you go? That's what do you, you know, if you go to five different doctors and you're getting five different answers, what do you do? It's tough to know what to do, yeah. So, well, that's, that's the thing. So if you go to, now let's say you go to five doctors and all five doctors tell you the same thing and then you go to the sixth doctor and he says something completely different, what do you do? 24 bones in the spine, 23 discs in between, and then we have the foundation, which is the sacrum and the pelvis here. Mm -hmm. So first thing is we want to evaluate, do we have a level base and foundation? If we have a level base and foundation, then whatever else we do to the rest of the spine should hold, right? Mm -hmm. What I want us to look at is symmetry. Do things look symmetrical? So when I'm looking here, first thing is this. Are, is this hole the same as this hole? I believe so. Okay. It's pretty close. Pretty close. Tiny bit off, not, not too bad. That one's bigger? This one looks actually like it's going more forward, and this one looks like it's coming back to me. So this mm. one looks like it's doing this, this one is coming back. Look at the SI joint. You can see through the SI joint pretty clearly. You can see the whitening, that's called enumeration. It's more white on the edges here than it is on your left side. What that tells us is we've got more stress being put on your right SI joint, okay? Or older injury on the right side. Interesting, all right? You think that's because it's compensating for what's happening? I don't know yet, I'm just showing know. you an x-ray finding. I'm just pointing out what mm -hmm. I see first. We'll put it all together, but we're gonna get to it. Um, so we need to look closely and we see, are these even? You can see the whitening on both sides, but you were a hockey player. You took a lot of stuff and you're a defenseman. And so. just skating in general, you're working those hips a lot. So. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at this tailbone. And there's part of the answer is here in your tailbone. The other part is your L4. But we didn't get the tailbone today. That's what was different. Let's look here. This is L5, this is sacrum S1. Sacrum, S1, S, you have a question? I do have a question. What's up? It's more of a statement. I have had a lot of pain in my tailbone in the left corner. Okay. Left corner on my tailbone. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's look here. S1, S2. S2 looks a little bent up this way, doesn't it, on the right side? Mm-hmm. S2 is a little bit bent. It's this amazing way. how you notice. Oh, that's yes, what it I takes do. practice. S3. S3 here. It goes like this and then it bends like this. I need you to see that. You can see from here, it bends this way and then it goes straight. Do you see this bend in here? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. I do. We have the SI joint, which is swollen on the right side. There's also swelling on the left, but it's starting to thin out at the bottom part of the joint there. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yes, I okay. do. So that's a little bit of scar tissue that's in there. Now, let's work our way up. L5. And they're pretty subtle, your stuff, but I can see it right here, L4. So we found an L4, right? L4 is a PLS, posterior left superior. And what L4 is doing from L4 is taking L3, L2, L1, all the way up to here. And now this is our next level. All right, that's T11. 
the next one to come off is T10. It's nice that it's actually consistent so far with what we found. T10. From T10. Sorry. Come on. <laughs> I'm so used to the paper. I like paper. Okay, so 10. Mm -hmm. We have 10. What happens at 9? Nine? 9 comes back to level. Next one to go off is 7. 7. 6 goes with it. 5. 5. 4. 3. 3 goes off again. You see this now. Mm -hmm. So the question is T3 or even T4. We found the pressure at 3. 3. 4 was also tender. 4 lines up with 5, though, so I don't see that as... Mm -hmm. 4 lines up with 5. 3, I'm okay with 3. Now, what happens from 3? 2 goes with it. It goes all the way through, right? All the way through, and then it starts to level off again where? Right at T1. Yes? That looks like a... Is it that a big curve? It yeah, looks pretty there's substantial. An, there's a nice kink in there. Yeah. And that's from whatever, life, hockey. Those are some side... Getting knocked on my butt a couple hundred shit. times, maybe? Maybe. Yeah. T1 through T4, this area controls what? Heart and lung. So that's our breathing, digest. That's our breathing, our circulation, our respiration. Down here is our digestion. Okay, T10, mm -hmm. when we're getting into T9, T10 area... This is more adrenal function, energy, fight or flight, chill out. Where? Where? What ones are those? T10. T10? That's, that's this area. Interesting. Okay. That's it. Just yeah. pointing it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, as we go up, we also have a right jaw deviation. You can see as you open your mouth, the jaw deviates this way. So we have a little bit of jaw deviation. We can see that this is this ramus of the mandible is slightly thinner than this. If we measure from here to here, and we measure from here to here. Okay, so this is a little bit thicker. What it's showing me is this. When you open your mouth, it goes to the right, and then it compensates on the left side. So that left side looks worse, but the right side is the issue. The left is the compensation. The left... As it's compensating, it has to rotate out to make sure your mouth is open as much as it can be. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be starting on a TMJ today, but it's something we're going to look at for you. Okay. Um, I'm okay with starting on L4 and T3 to start. Then have you walk, then recheck everything. Mm -hmm. Then see if we're going to do T10 as well today or not. Um, I know we're going to end up, something is going to open up down in that sacrum at some point. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as your SI joint specifically, but I do. Why? SI stands for sacroiliac. Mm -hmm. It looks more like the sacral component of the SI joint, not the iliac component. There's two parts of the SI mm -hmm. joint. Let's go to the numbers. And let's look back at these numbers. Your numbers are not that significant. That's what's a trip. When you look at your numbers, let's look at the numbers and what they mean. We have a slight short leg on the right. It's three millimeters. Anything under seven adjustments hold according to this work. So you're under seven. That's fine. Not worried about that. If we look here, 247... 247, 248, that's a millimeter difference in the SI joints. If we look here, 63.9, 63, there's no rotation of the sacrum. It's going to be more setting it forward, okay? And when we're looking at uh, rotation of the pelvis, same thing. They line up. This line lines up. S1 lines up with the pubic bone. 
So when we're getting an overall presentation, here's what's misleading with you. You're presenting with a lot of these symptoms and, and pains. And we always talk about we have to start in the foundation, right? And when we're looking at the numbers for you, they're not super, they're not, like, they're not really standing out. Mm -hmm. So with you, we have to hunt a little bit more. That makes a lot of sense because I'm presenting pretty symmetrically. That's what I'm saying. You yeah. present symmetrical, mm -hmm. but you're hurting. But my pain doesn't, yeah. Correct. Now, L4 is what I see because look, um, you can go back to some of my old videos and how I talk about a non-weight bearing MRI. You have a level L5 disc. Your L5 disc is great, dude. Your L4 is where it's starting. I'm just saying. <laughs> and then we have this down here, this little nub here. It's an old tailbone injury, okay? Again, that wasn't the significant finding today. It may show up when, as we clear up the rest. Mm -hmm. But today we'll start on T3, we'll start on L4. We're gonna go knee chest table. Okay. Mm -hmm. We want a nice, good, deep set. You're a hockey player. You can deal with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I can deal with it. Yeah. I can deal. You <laughs> can deal with it. And then we'll go from there. We have the week to figure out this case and go on this journey. Sounds great. Sound good? Yeah. Shall we get started? Yes, we shall. That I have in my back. It's it's very unique and it seems strange to me because I'm like I said, I've been so mobile and then I'm, I have like a hitch when I walk. And I never have had that before. It came up pretty quick and fast, too. You ready now? Let's go. All right. So now we need to stop the story. And we need to start fresh now, today. Mm -hmm. And we need to stop the story of the pain. I'm going to talk about some energetic stuff that's going on with you, too. Mm -hmm. Maybe not today. I want you to see how you deal with your, your visit. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'll do mm -hmm. OK, let's go face down. Knees over here, please. Face down, chest here. Slide down a little bit, sir. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Now, bring your hands here. Relax them there, please, the best you can. Bring your xiphoid, bring this down, slide down. Bring your knees back, back. There you go. So your belly button should be able to hang, hang down. There you go. Now, he's got an inferior L4 vertebrae, so it's gone posterior inferior. In his case, we're gonna really have to lift it. I'm just going over an x-ray. That's L4, so what we have to do is we have to lift it before we set it. If you just set it straight, you're gonna jam the joint. And so, we're gonna feel his endpoint, and as we're taking it down, I want to see how much we can actually lift it. Five. That's the one. You feel that, sir? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I need to be right there. And it's a lift and set down. Muy bueno. Okay. Lift and set down. You're pretty flexible. Yeah, hockey. <laughs> Knees back a little bit, sir, just a tiny bit. That's it. Turn your toes the other way so you're not bracing. Good. Good. Gotcha. Beautiful. You okay there? Mm-hmm. Home run. Come on up. That felt really good. Now, let's walk it off a couple of times from that. Back and forth. Let's see if we can see his SI joint. Good. Have a seat over here. Let's rescope, please. I notice more. It's very subtle on my left side. Even when I walk, I could, I guess I could feel it a little bit more fluid. A tiny bit. T3 is clear. T10 actually cleared up. Ha. Huh. Nice. I can say I've never had that adjustment before. What do you mean? Right in the, I think it was the L4 yeah. adjustment. Yeah. I have not had one quite like that before. 
Yeah, you're all clear. Walk it, walk it off one more time and I'll read it. What feels different when you walk? Anything? I feel like my bod, my mobility is better. I ha I can feel my legs in the ground a little bit more. It's very subtle. Uh, let's see, so is your ex brother. Yeah. Right? Scoot forward, please. Feet together. Open and close the knees. Feet touching. Open wide. Open and close, both of them. Right side only. Seriously? That's better. Left side only. <laughs> They're moving more symmetrical. Scoot back for me, please. Let's test it out for you so you can feel. That's the top of the joint. That's the middle of the joint. That's the bottom of the joint. That felt, that felt good. Bueno, right? Yeah. Top of the joint, middle of the joint. <laughs> no, that feels good. I haven't touched your SI joint, senor. You came in complaining of left SI joint pain and dysfunction. We adjusted your L4, correct? We did. <laughs> How are you gonna explain this? I can't, I think I'm the talking. So. All right. Come on my right side, let's check his top. I need to check the upper neck, okay? Head down, please. Do you remember how big the reading was there? It's clear. Well, I think we did a good thing, dude. We started on T3 and L4, even though we got four pressure readings. That's clinical judgment that the individual doctor will do. Does that mean if you went to another doc, he'd find the same four and do the same two? I don't know. Right. Um, would they find the same four in terms of skull palpating? Pretty sure. Same analysis? Pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's deciding where you start. Mm -hmm. And in your case, I decided on L4 because sacrum, they were both kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. Sorry, they were both a little restricted in terms of that tightness. So you're complaining of one, but they both felt kind of the same to me. I'm like, it's not there. Mm -hmm. I didn't find any pressure in your sacrum today. Doesn't know. Maybe I opened up a can of worms. We'll see. But the L4 was the most prominent, that definitive there. And out of the four things we found, it was the lowest, so I went with that. Then the next thing is we saw the kink in your upper back, right? Mm -hmm. With that kink that's been there a while, whatever's going on up here is probably a compensation. Now, long-standing compensation can become a problem or a subluxation. But again, we decided on that. Everything is clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was always curious how that felt. How did it feel? Pretty, pretty weird. Left side is good. Right shoulder. That, yeah. Let me do the work. I'm reaching over. And that freed it up, but there was no big pop, was there? Mm -hmm. Let's go on your back and do your ankles, please. Raise your right leg. Sound is the board, not your ankle breaking. <laughs> It's just dramatic, the sound does. There you go. Stand up for me, let's do the hands. Stand up and squeeze. Squeeze. This one is your elbow starting. Squeeze. Starting right here. Ooh. Straighten it out. Straighten it out. There. Told you. Posterior distal radial. I've never had that done either. You must? Yeah. Most people. What is that? It's a posterior humerus. So the humerus, this is this bone. Mm -hmm. It's posterior in the back. Most people are setting these all as they're missing the, the humerus. Yeah, there you go. Like, squeeze. It feels good. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's do the uh, radius, distal radius. Posterior lunate. Squeeze. 
Salad. Squeeze. You're lefty now. This is the ulna posterior. Well, yeah, right with my, I write with my right, but. But you swing with the left. Yeah. I so, like humerus is there. I'm gonna show this. Humerus is above the olecranon process up here. Whereas the ulna is right below it. And this side was the humerus, this side is the ulna. You hear the difference, <laughs> feel the difference. Yeah. That one's a little spicier, yeah. right? Yeah. A little spicy, a little crunchy, a little more scar tissue. This one was a nice clean clunk. Mm -hmm. Squeeze now. Squeeze. Wow. There you go. I could feel that. Like Squeeze. That, yeah. Still a tiny little bit, but you got to give it to me. Breathe in. Yeah, well, I feel that. On the floor, on your knees, hand on the table. Let's use the board to go a little quicker to free it up. Down, down, down. There you go. Down. There. Go like that five times. Good. Squeeze. There you go. Feels good. Yeah. Good? Yeah. That's where we're going to start. Any questions? No. Welcome to I think the we're office. good. Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome.